Here he is. Elon. I am just, I become a bigger fan of Elon Musk every, every week. Um, in addition to the mask repeals, like the mask mandate repeals, the other thing that the libs are apparently losing their fucking minds over is this Elon Musk Twitter situation. And I realize, again, this isn't a political show. We're not really going to talk about politics here. Uh, I realize I, I do. I always acknowledge that I shit on uh, kind of like liberal outrage pretty frequently. Uh, and that there is a lot of outrage on the right as well. This isn't to establish like my political position. It's just that right wing, like when the right, and at, this is just at this moment in history, because it used to be that the right was like the religious, you know, all that. And they were very cunty and uptight. When the American right gets angry about something now, you what you wind up with is a bunch of like redneck congressmen making uh, videos of them fucking uh, shooting plastic explosives with uh, with an automatic weapon, um, or they they come up with a hilarious chant like "Let's go Brandon," or they dress up like buffaloes and they overrun the Capitol. When the libs get upset, they just become annoying and whiny and preachy and douchey. So that's, you know, that's more fun to kind of, to kind of pick apart. You know, if, if you want to if you get mad about some guys protesting the second amendment, you want to blow off steam by going and uh, shooting a, a massive brick of, of C4 uh, and, and watch it go boom out by the lake. I'm hard for me to get upset with you about that. It looks like a lot of fun. Um, the libs these days, uh, they used to, you know, they used to get high and fucking, uh, and go out and then and you know trip out the uh, the establishment. They would go out. And they would they would drive around in a van listening to Uptown Girl, and they would freak out squares. Uh, they don't do that anymore. Uh, now they uh, now they just shame everyone. Former Labor Secretary under President Clinton, Robert Reich, joined the chorus of media critics attacking tech mogul Elon Musk's significant purchase of Twitter stock. On Tuesday, Reich penned an opinion piece in The Guardian titled Elon Musk's Vision for the Internet is Dangerous Nonsense, attacking Musk's new status as the largest Twitter shareholder. Uh, here's what Reich said. Uh, Musk says he wants to free the Internet, but what he really aims to do is make it even less accountable than it is now. So the major beef that a lot of people have with Elon Musk uh, wanting to take over uh, Twitter, and I don't understand how the whole business thing works, so I, I'm not even going to fucking touch that. Uh, they Elon doesn't think that Trump should have been deplatformed, I guess. Uh, and to the libs, if you think that, if you think Donald Trump should be a, allowed to tweet and make fun of uh, people's hair or make fun of people for being fat, uh, you're a threat to democracy, apparently, uh, which is ridiculous. I mean, I think you're a threat to the entertainment value of the internet if you do want to keep Donald Trump off of Twitter. Trump Twitter is one of the funniest fucking things in the world. Uh, billionaires like Musk have shown time and again that they consider themselves above the law. And to a large extent, they are, Reich wrote. Musk has enough wealth that legal penalties are no more than slaps on his wrist and enough power to control one of the most important ways the public now receives news. Think about it. After years of posting tweets that skirt the law. That was anticlimactic. Musk was given a seat on Twitter's board and is probably now negotiating for even more clout. Um, and then, this part I fucking love. He goes on to suggest that Musk's Twitter stock purchase is comparable to dictators such as Russian President Vladimir Putin. That's Musk's dream and Trump's and Putin's and the dream of every dictator, strongman, demagogue and modern day robber baron on earth. For the rest of us, it would be a brave new nightmare. Yes. Can you imagine? What horrors could unfold if a billionaire like Elon Musk controlled a media platform, right? He could 
And I don't, I don't want to think, uh, I don't want to imagine a world where something like this could happen. But a billionaire controlling a media platform could possibly use it for something nefarious, like uh, in the name of profit, flooding users' brains with massive amounts of advertising for things like alcohol and gambling and fast food and, and credit cards and other things. Uh, that people might use to ruin their lives, right? Uh, they could use it to sway public opinion on on important political issues by by creating uh, news platforms that were entirely staffed with people who were well paid to express uh, a single opinion uh, on each issue. Uh, you know, he could uh, he could become aware of reports that uh, many wealthy and powerful people, were congregating on an island somewhere to have sex with children, right? He could, he could, uh, he could suppress all of that information if uh, if Elon Musk, as a billionaire, controlled a media platform, and that would all be terrible, um, right? Because that doesn't happen. What we're lucky right now, and what we should be clinging to with the establishment media, is that they would never allow or engage in any of that behavior that's they are a watchdog for the people um so yeah they're maybe they're right maybe they make a very good point about uh elon i mean really let's be honest what it comes down to is that these fucking nerds don't like uh that uh elon musk who is kind of a nerd himself but a uh, a cooler, wealthier nerd. They don't like that he's he's smoking weed with Joe Rogan and he's shooting rockets at Mars and he's being awesome and just going off off the fucking reservation and doing what he wants. Because, like I said, you know, the top of the show, everything comes back to control. Uh, and there is a video that's been making the rounds, and I'm not going to play it just because I think. Uh, there, there will be confusion. I don't want you to think that I think that this is a recent video, but it's the one of uh, Joe and uh, Mika or whatever they're fucking on MSNBC. And they're talking about how it's their job to tell people what to think. And it's been taken out of context, I guess, on Twitter that uh, people thought it was uh, in reference to Elon Musk. It's not a reference to Musk, so I don't, I don't want to play it in a confusing manner here. Uh, but the point remains that it is their attitude that they are the ones who should be telling people what to think. Like, let's just apply it to a different person now, right? It's still, it's the same attitude. These people who, by the way, are not, in, a lot of them are not incredib incredibly bright. A lot of the people you see presenting on, uh, on, you know, news or in politics, you're not necessarily a smart person if you do that. Uh, in politics, people tend to rise up, uh, perhaps because they're shrewd, uh, because they're aggressive, because they follow a path, they're willing to do certain things, to, to walk a certain party line. There's a way to advance in politics uh, without being uh, particularly competent or, or capable. Uh, and the same thing uh, goes with the media. Uh, a lot of people, you know, news anchors and et cetera, a lot of them are just complete fucking dumbasses who are good at reading from a prompter and look good on camera with 15 pounds of makeup on their face. Like they're not experts in the things they talk about. They have writers and producers who are putting it all in front of them. They're just discussing it. Uh, but despite all of that, uh, they think that the American people are too dumb to think for themselves uh, and that they are geniuses because they're on TV. So they feel that they should be telling people how to think. Uh, and then it's uh, it's all bracketed by commercials for for dog shit like, uh, you know, fast food or the fucking uh, a sports betting app. Uh, in fact, there's what was better then. And I think I have a, a clip right here for you. Um, uh, where is the uh, I have it one just a moment. This clip is actually, I don't, I don't want to say I have a uh, a favorite clip from the uh, the Ukraine war because that would be uh, that's kind of <laughs> that's kind of dark, but I love this. 
Like, is there anything more fucking CNN than this? And a little bit of chicken fry. Cold beer on Friday night. First of all, I mean... I went over this. I'm not going to, you know, I don't want to relitigate the whole thing, but. In addition to the fact that it's Applebee's, which which is just d- atrocious, it's dog shit, it's dog shit food. Um, the fact that that awful, a little bit of chicken fry, that fucking song. Oh, boy, do I hate that fucking song. And then this uh, video of a man in a cowboy hat doing a, a TikTok dance of some kind. Just what a what a slap in the face of anyone who was killed uh, shortly after that air raid siren went off. Um, but it's, you know, to the point, you have MSNBC hosts and CNN, they, they all feel the same fucking way. Um, they think they're smarter than you. They think they're better than you. Uh, and they think it's perfectly fine that they can go on on TV and use their time their time on air to spread their uneducated opinion that something as horrible as, as war, right? Because a lot of them, the media is often responsible for beating the war drum. That's one of the things that the mainstream media has done, you know, in, in spades uh, over the years is beat the fucking war drum. Uh, they will do that, and then they will run a fucking Applebee's ad. So not only will they try to convince you that we should engage in violent uh, conflict with other human beings, they will then tell you that you should go to Applebee's and scarf down the kind of body-destroying appetizers that will eventually leave you immunocompromised. So then they can further convince you that you need to spend two years staying inside wearing a mask and wiping things down with Clorox, and that anyone who doesn't do that wants to kill you. Um, it's really, if it's if if it's all just a happy accident, that it's a terrible accident. But it feels just so. It really is feeling feeling nefarious. Um, just. Absolutely, like it just it just seems so much more blatant now. Uh, that is, I think, going to be one of the better things to come from social media. Is I think the distrust of mass media, thanks to uh, thanks to how how out front they've been. Uh, apparently, CNN Plus just fucking nosedived uh, because people are people are sick of their bullshit. Uh, and I say this having again worked in the news industry and having having friends who have made that their profession and I, uh, I don't get it. Those people are still my friends. They're not, you know, they are not the billionaires running the cabal, but, uh, I don't know. I don't know how you do it. I cannot cannot make a fucking career out of it. So good for Elon. I hope Elon is very successful. I hope, uh, I hope he frees up Twitter and puts fucking rockets on uh, Jupiter or wherever, wherever his heart desires. And, uh, yeah, these, uh, the haters, as they say, can suck a fucking nut. 